Well, the very large one, no, because I don't know who all owns it. But the small one that's in our uh, yeah, we're ready. Sorry. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we will start with Pastor John Dostal. Uh, give our invocation, uh, followed by the flag salute. Let us pray. Almighty God, we lift before you all who co- uh, govern uh, Kingsburg. May those who hold power understand that it is a trust from you to be used, not for personal glory or profit, but for the service of the people. Grant in your mercy just and honest government and give us grace to live together in unity and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, we will call this meeting to order. It is Wednesday, June 7th for the regular meeting for the Kingsburg City Council. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you do roll call? Present. Here. Okay, item two is approval of the agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Item passes. Item three is presentations. We have the Swedish Festival update by the Kingsburg District Chamber of Commerce. President Reggie Gerke. Welcome. Thank you. Council members, thank you for uh, letting me come today and give you a little update on where we're at with some chamber things. Uh, not only the Swedish Festival, but there's a couple other things I just wanted to, to bring up too since we're here. I don't have a fancy presentation or anything. Sorry. No. No fancy slides, but I do have some notes. So um, Swedish Festival was just a couple weeks ago. It went really, really well. We had a very, very big crowd. I um, couldn't have asked for better weather. And I uh, really, things just, it, it pulled, it came through really well. Uh, we didn't have as much margin on it as we were hoping for, but uh, we still came out ahead. So that's important. Uh, prior to that, we had the car show, which I don't know, a lot of you probably already saw that. That one we was, I think, even bigger from an attendance standpoint than um, Swedish Festival was, but it came out great, too. So uh, we're now rolling into summer band concerts. Those will be starting next Thursday, so a week from tomorrow will be our first concert. So I invite you guys to come out and see that. Uh, Prior to that, uh, there will be the farmer's market set up with uh, some food trucks and hopefully some produce vendors. we're still trying to track down a few, but uh, I think we've got some that'll be there. So it should be a pretty, pretty good event. So can you give the dates on that farmer's market or when that happens? It starts next Thursday and runs for six weeks on Thursdays. At what time? Uh, five o'clock. And then the band concert starts at eight o'clock. Awesome. I, fireworks. Uh, we got that coming up pretty soon. I, to be completely honest with you, we're, we're not doing very well in the fundraising. Uh, we, we've got a group that's been out pounding the pavement and talking to people. We've had booths set up at every single event we've had, and uh, we've come up with about $800 so far. So uh, significantly short. But uh, we're done with Swedish Festival, so we're hoping we can put some focus on it um, even more so and see, what, see how it goes. So. Did the we st- link on, I'm sorry, did the link on your um, Facebook page get updated? I know that there it was a like QR code and then the link for anybody from right. yeah. the city that wanted to donate. Yeah, the link should it should be on there. I, I can double check. I will, but um, it should have been should have been updated. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for catching that. QR code doesn't do much good on your phone. <laughs> Can't really take a picture of your own phone, but uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of a challenge, but yeah, so I, uh, we're making some progress there. It's not great progress, but we're, we're not going backwards at least. So just got to give it some time. Um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, so we, we just had a street eats last Friday, um, in conjunction with the bids, I, um, 
line dancing event downtown. We were in the park and we had a band there, uh, lots of food trucks, huge crowd. Uh, most of the food trucks actually sold out before the night was over. So it went very well for them, uh, which meant a lot of people came downtown afterwards. I know I came through and checked in with everybody and the restaurants were all packed, busy. So it was good. I have kind of an interesting um, story from Street Eats that I'd like to share um, uh, real quick. But Kebab Twist, we just did a ribbon cutting for them just this last week, uh, or just this week, sorry. Uh, they opened at the end of the Village Mall there. They were actually started out as a food truck coming to Street Eats events here in town. And I was talking with the owner about it, and I was like, Why, wh why'd you guys end up here? Well, we came to Kingsburg for Street Eats events and some of the other chamber events, and we just fell in love with the town. Um, and they found a place to open up their first brick and mortar because it's always been a food truck, and they're now looking for a house in town too. So. I think uh, that's a that's a huge win for events like that. If you hear that, like not only did we get people to come to Kingsburg, but now they opened a business in Kingsburg and they're going to move here. So it was all of the wins that we wanted. So that was that was really neat to see. Um, one thing that I was asked to bring up uh, is some safety concerns that we have for the events. Um, the last, so during the line dancing and during Swedish festival, we had a car each time come through barricades and almost run people over. So um, I already talked to Dave Peters a little bit about some options of some more permanent, not permanent, but temporarily hardened uh, barricades that actually will stop a vehicle. Um, as you know, there's been incidents across the nation where people drive through on purpose to create havoc, so we want to try to get ahead of that. I think what we're seeing is maybe um, maybe ignorance. I'll just I'll call it ignorance. They just feel like I should be able to still drive through here, or I've got to get here, and I, the barricade doesn't mean anything to me. So I don't think we've seen anything that's malicious, uh, but we want to start thinking of some options to um, harden some of those areas to avoid. Anybody getting ran over, because that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Do we have, uh, <clears throat> like, K-rails in town for that, or the ability to move those? Or is that equipment we don't possess? We don't have it. We've tried in the past. Um, sometimes we'll put uh, trailers, if we can put a trailer across. I know one of the concerns that's been brought up before is emergency access still. So we don't want to have anything that's stopping an ambulance or a fire truck or a police car from getting in. Um, so we want something that is removable, but will stop a car still. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I have. Any questions? Comments? Anyone from the public have comment? Awesome. Well, they thank all you. work here. They're not from the public. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for all of your hard work. Thank you. We appreciate we appreciate your guys' support too. So, and we see all of you out there at the events, and we like that, and you're out there helping too. So, I know Stacy worked hard at Swedish Festival. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Next item is public comments. This is a time for any citizen to come forward and address the city council on any issues within our jurisdiction that's not listed on the agenda. Do we have anyone from the public that would like to make any comments? Seeing none, we will move on to item five, our consent calendar. These items are to be considered routine in nature and are to be placed on the consent calendar. They will be considered as one item and voted upon in one vote unless individual consideration is requested. Do we have anyone that would like to pull any items from the consent calendar? No? If not, we will entertain a motion. To approve the consent calendar? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Consent calendar passes. We will now move to a public hearing. Uh, that is for Public Works, Fire Department, and Police Department, master fee schedule. So at this time, we will open the public hearing and we will have a presentation by City Manager Alex Henderson. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and members of council. Uh, each year, staff reviews 
Uh, the existing master fee schedule to determine if changes are needed to ensure services provided are being adequately funded by the appropriate parties. Uh, and taxpayers are not responsible for funding or subsidizing activities that are often uh, development driven. Uh, such fees uh, shall in no case exceed the actual cost of providing the service in compliance uh, with Article 12B, Section 8C of the California Constitution. Uh, tonight we have uh, a handful of uh, rate changes that we are uh, recommending. Uh, first, the uh, ambulance and police departments, uh, we need to uh, adopt some fees uh, mostly so that we have uh, a fee schedule that we can turn in for when we are doing emergency Office of Emergency Service work, so uh, wildland fires or, you know, with the flooding recently, um, you know, police department, both police and fire uh, were called out for that. And so if we're going to get reimbursed, we need to have an adopted fee schedule uh, by the council that sets those rates. Uh, we also use it, uh, would use the same thing for other, uh, you know, community events or things like that. So if somebody needs a... Uh, needs police officers, something like that, we have a, a set rate that's consistent. Uh, the third one uh, is for public works. Uh, so if you'll recall, uh, obviously we went through a Prop 218 uh, uh, about a year ago, went through that process. Uh, we had rates uh, increase on September 1st of 2022. Uh, we are uh, taking the uh, consultant's recommendation uh, to continue with that process uh, and increase that 5.5% uh, uh, beginning July 1. Uh, we do anticipate that that will be very close to what the CPI increase is for the Mid Valley disposal uh, contract. Uh, that is set, uh, it uses the May uh, CPI rate, which doesn't come out until the middle of June, but uh, for purposes of, um, um, for administrative purposes, for us to get that implemented by July 1, and the council to consider that uh, tonight's date. Uh, one thing I did want to note. Um, and Abigail can pull it up. Uh, the information in your packet shows uh, some incorrect uh, current fees. Th those are the old, old rates. Um, so if you're comparing them to what is proposed, it looks like a, a much larger jump. Uh, but if you uh, take a look at what was approved at the actual Prop 218, which is on the screen in front of you right now, uh, you'll see what the current rates are uh, as opposed to about a uh, dollar eighty. Uh, at the top line there is the difference uh, in rate. So I just wanted to um, you know, point that out um, to, for transparency purposes. So uh, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you may have, but that concludes my report. Council discussion? Okay. okay. Uh, we'll open it for a public comment if anyone would like to discuss the master fee schedule. Seeing none, we will close public comment. Is there any further city council discussion? Then we will go ahead and close the public hearing uh, with the possible action of adopting this resolution. I'll make the motion to adopt resolution number 2023-402. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Resolution is adopted. We will go back into regular council hearing. Uh, item 6.2 is the award of fiscal year 22-23 street projects to Central Valley Asphalt in the amount of $1.06 million. Staff report prepared by City Engineer Dave Peters. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council. Um, Included in the city's 2022-2023 uh, capital improvement program are several street improvement projects. Uh, they include 10th Avenue from Stroud to Cam, 22nd Avenue from Sierra to Orange, 18th Avenue from Earl to Kern, and then various slurry seals, application of slurry seals on various city streets in the north, east, and southwest uh, areas of our town. Um, these projects were designed um, on, on May 2nd. They were advertised, and the city requested bids for the work. On May 31st, the city received seven bids uh, from contractors, the low bid coming from Central Valley Asphalt in the amount of $1,061,088. Central Valley Asphalt from Lindsay. They've done work in the city of Kingsburg in the past. Um, they have the appropriate licenses, and, and uh, their licenses are, their license is in good standing. Um, the work on the first street, three streets that I stated generally includes a lot of pavement uh, replacement work, 
but it also will include uh, upgrading curb ramps and, and doing some concrete repairs as well, um, in addition to uh, applying new striping markings and some utility adjustments. Um, we expect the work, once we get going, will last about 30 days, so the idea is to get it done during the during when all the school's out. Um, actually have a pre-construction meeting tentatively scheduled for tomorrow, subject to award of the of the contract tonight. So um, that concludes my report. Be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any public comment on this matter? Seeing none, do we have any council discussion? I guess I have a couple questions. Um, technically speaking, Mr. Peters, like the slurry seal for people like myself that don't know, what it, that material lasts for a year, two years, ten years? What What is that? It, it, it's generally um, intended to extend pavement life on the order of like five to seven years. Um, you know, the earlier it's applied to a pavement, kind of, the, you know, the more bang you get for your buck. So, you know, extend it, extend it further. Um, just essentially keeps the the pavements from breaking down and needing full reconstruction. So, yeah, it's about five to seven years, and then you got to you know, have to come back in. Probably, yeah. Correct. Um, and then how much of an inconvenience is that to, like, citizens? Is that, like, it's, it's not, not but usually deal? It's usually about a day. I mean, you usually get the, um, the no parking signs out the day before, which, you know, and there's a, a pretty robust requirement in the contract documents for noticing so that they don't just walk out to go to work and realize, that, you know, this, this is happening. Uh, so they'll be notified well in advance um, and w will not be able to park on the street the night before. Um, the work will be done that day, and usually the streets are op open back up by the end of the day. So, so yeah, all right. it's, so it's positive a positive project with not much inconvenience. Correct. So that's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Other council discussion? Questions? Okay, if there's no more questions, uh, this is an action item um, to award that street project to Central Valley Asphalt if someone would like to make that motion. I'll make that motion. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> now you can attend your meeting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item is 6.3, the Caltrans Co-op Agreement for Sierra Street Project. Staff report prepared by City Engineer Dave Peters. Hi again. Uh, so we've been working with Caltrans for over a year um, to install some crosswalk upgrades on Sierra Street at three existing um, crosswalks at, at Draper Street and at 19th and 20th. So those are existing crosswalks um, that we'd like to upgrade. And, and then uh, also have, have included in the project uh, construction of a new crosswalk on Sierra Street at Madison to connect the trail that goes from Lanaya Villas up to our trail that goes now all the way up to Cam. Um, the upgrades would, in, would include uh, new curb ramps on either side of the, of the crosswalks, um, as well as you know, a re replacement uh, and application of new striping, and also the installation of rectangular rapid flashing beacon warning systems at each of those four crossings. Uh, we've also expanded the project recently to include replacement of various sections of damaged concrete along Sierra Street from 99 to, to Madsen, so that kind of in areas where there's, they're in disrepair, um, we, would, we would remove and replace those sections of, of sidewalk. Um, been part, like I said, we've been partnering with Caltrans on this. Um, uh, Caltrans has agreed to reimburse the city for half of the anticipated costs of the crosswalk improvements and then the full cost of all the sidewalk repairs. Um, in that agreement, the city of Kingsburg is responsible for designing, which we've, which we've done, and, and then um, construction of the improvements, then we'll get reimbursed by Caltrans. The, uh, the cost of the project is $422,500, and Caltrans' share of that is $242,500. So all of these terms have been put into a cooperative agreement. That's kind of Caltrans' standard standard agreement for these kinds of kinds of projects. Um, and that's included in your report. Um, we're very close to having the encroachment permit issued for, for the design uh, plans for the project. And so um, approval of the co-op is kind of one of the last things to get the project 
out to bid and, and in construction. So we're asking you tonight to authorize the city manager to execute this cooperative agreement with Caltrans and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any public comment on this topic? How about council discussion? I have a question. Um, I know that we've been working with the high school for maybe over a year or two years about some of these crosswalks. Does this include, are we done with the one on 18th and Sierra or is that a different project? The intersection? Mm -hmm. I think it's a separate project from this. Okay. Yeah. We've, we've played around with some different ideas there, um, but, but that's independent of, of this, this project. This project is focusing mainly on the, the, the three existing crosswalks and then adding a new one down at Madsen. Okay, so the one from Memorial Park over by the Baptist Church, that one is, it, it's going to be the that, rapid? Yes. Okay. Yeah, all four of these locations will have the, okay. the rapid flashers. Um, our, and we're still working with Caltrans on the 18th and Sierra, because I know that was really important to the high school. Um, yeah, like I said, just outside the, the scope of this particular project, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, the the kind of the critical path for these kinds of projects is is procuring the equipment because there's long lead times. So once we get the um, the encroachment permit, which we expect to have very soon, the city is actually going to go out and purchase the equipment separately while we're bidding the work. And so the idea is that the um, the work will probably happen late July, August. The equipment will come in late August, early September. And so that we'll have all the other work completed, the equipment comes in, we can just install it. So that's the general timeline without getting any more specific than that. It's a good project, especially at Sierra and Madsen. This needs to happen with our Linnea Villas there. We have, oh, yeah. that's a tough spot for our folks to, to cross Yeah, we had there. to jump through some hoops to get Caltrans to kind of approve that as a crossing location, but we're, we're past that. They, they give us okay. a thumbs up, so. Have you gone out there at night? What's the lighting look like at that intersection? I think I think it's pretty sufficient. Okay. Yeah, I can go back out there and look at it again. But uh, you know, we just did all those improvements uh, on Sierra Street at Lanai Villas, and I know the intersection lighting was part of those improvements. So, and all these intersections you said will have the flashing sign beacons, correct? But not in the roadways. Am yeah, they'll correctly? correct. They won't. They won't be the uh, the in pavement lights. They're the. I don't really think anybody's using those anymore because they just are really difficult from a maintenance standpoint. These will be the signs that are that are at the edges by the by the ramps and then they have the rapid flashing strobe LEDs. They're so solar powered, aren't they? They're solar powered, yeah. So they, those have been proven to be extremely effective. S similar and they're similar to what we have over at Roosevelt School. Yeah, okay. And the baseball park. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, could Dave, can you just uh, maybe talk a little bit about what the cost for one of those locations are? Because I think, you know, we get lots of requests yeah. for these at lots of our, our crosswalks. So I think it would be helpful for everyone to know how much, like, one location yeah, for the. Yeah, one location, you know, that's simple, just applying, you know, application of these sorts of improvements is about $80,000 for one location. The equipment's very expensive. Yeah. I remember trying to go through this when I, before council, and I saw in public safety, and we thought we could just throw them up everywhere with the lights, and it was just it's just some lights. But come to find out, that's a lot more than that. Yeah, the equipment's about maybe a little bit more than half of that eighty thousand. It's just just for the equipment, just to purchase the equipment. Okay. Do we have any more council discussion on that, or comments from staff? Okay, this is an action item to authorize the city manager to execute the project uh, co-op agreement with Caltrans. If someone would like to make a motion. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Next item, 6.4, the city manager's recommended budget introduction by city manager Alex Henderson. Look at that group. Looking group. I like that. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem and members of council. Uh, as part of the uh, city's charter, 
Uh, I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, the first reading of uh, the recommended budget for fiscal year 2024. Uh, again, uh, informational this evening, um, uh, council will take uh, official action uh, at our meeting uh, in two weeks. Uh, so uh, uh, the budget itself uh, is our, our blueprint for policy decisions uh, and is tied directly to the six strategic goals that you see in front of you that have also been adopted by council as part of our uh, five-year strategic plan. Uh, so as I uh, jump into this, I'm going to start with a recap uh, of the uh, current year, um, and then I will go into the next year. But please, if there are questions, um, feel free to jump in. I'm, I'm, I'm not going through line by line or by line item, uh, line item. Uh, so it's just a kind of a high level overview. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have from the spreadsheets that are also included in the but in the packet. Uh, so just starting with our general fund, uh, which is our largest fund. Uh, we are seeing uh, most of our revenues come in either at or a little bit higher than uh, what was originally uh, forecasted a year ago. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, and so we're uh, anticipating that our revenues will outpace our uh, expenditures uh, by about $400,000. Um, again, uh, reasons on the, on the right-hand side there. Um, uh, some of it is based upon uh, some of our development uh, continuing. Um, but then also, uh, as I mentioned, both sales tax and uh, TOT returns are, are higher. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we, ob we obviously uh, conservatively budget year to year, especially when uh, we're unsure of how some of those uh, areas will rebound, e you know, even coming out of the pandemic. I think we're uh, fully out of that now. So, um, but uh, good financial health as we stand here today. Uh, some expenditures of note, uh, we always include, uh, there is a transfer to the uh, fire and ambulance fund uh, to cover some of those costs. Uh, we do have uh, uh, transition fees. What that is is when we annex property, we have to pay uh, Fresno County for a period of 10 years. Uh, you'll see a little bit later that uh, this year is year nine of 10 of our very large payment, uh, which is made for the SunMate annexation that was done. And it's about $145,000 a year this year. So. Uh, two more years of that, and then that will come off the books. Um, the other ones, those other annexations are much smaller amounts because um, there was nothing developed there originally. It was farmland, much smaller uh, tax increment. Um, uh, you see uh, some of our expenditures are, are planning uh, building costs. Uh, uh, the professional services line includes uh, a lot of the work that uh, Dave and his team does uh, as part of our plan check. Um, so those costs are included. Uh, police costs uh, are the largest uh, single amount uh, for the general fund. Uh, it's about a uh, little over 43%, which continues uh, in the next year. And, and again, uh, just a, a positive uh, outcome that we're looking at, uh, projecting as of right now of about $400,000 uh, and some, uh, uh, sig some significant capital items uh, that have been completed over the last year as well. Uh, our recreation funds are a subset of our general fund. Um, so our revenues have mostly returned uh, to the pool. Um, uh, both senior center, our, our senior center operations are, are buoyed really by CDBG, CDBG funds and uh, some ARPA dollars, uh, especially since we've gone to sort of making more meals than we were uh, pre-pandemic. So you can see there the, uh, the amount that the, the general fund uh, contributes to those, those two areas as well. And then we continue to see, you know, just increases you know, not only for wages from um, minimum wage increases, but also just normal supply inflation issues that you'll see everywhere else. Uh, we do operate three uh, enterprise funds for more uh, business fund related, uh, our water, our solid waste, uh, and our ambulance and fire funds. Um, uh, water sales uh, pretty in line with, uh, with normal projections. Uh, possibly a little bit lower this year because you'll really see usage change by how the weather reacts. So we've just had several months of rain and so people won't water their lawns as much. And so you'll kind of see those ebbs and flows uh, based upon that. Um, uh, solid waste uh, is, is trending much better than it was when we were here a year ago because of the Prop 218, which we just talked about. So that fund uh, is in a much better spot than it was uh, when we stood here last year. Um, some of the things that we had included in previous years were some of those penalty charges. Those were suspended during uh, the pandemic. So if you were late on your water fees or, or late on um, you know, your garbage fees, uh, some of those we, we couldn't collect. Um, but we have uh, participated in state programs when available to help pay those down. So uh, basically residents don't are out of that. We, we apply, Daniel and his department and the finance department applies. And then if we're successful, we just credit their accounts and 
um, those those expenditures or those outstanding amounts are wiped off the books. Um, uh, most of the uh, expenditures are uh, essentially where we anticipated them to be. There are some higher uh, OT expenditures for uh, the fire department because of their uh, call outs to the wild, uh, wildland fires. Uh, we do get those uh, reimbursed, uh, obviously, but it usually comes uh, several months later. And then, um, you know, just a constant battle. I know when Chief Perkins was up here last week, just with uh, supply costs, fuel costs, all those sorts of things uh, continuing to increase. Uh, we have a couple of special revenue funds. Uh, one is transportation, and then one is uh, our Measure E fund. Uh, our transportation funds here, uh, what I've focused on in this slide, um, generally in line with where we expected it. I mean, it is an estimate that we get. I mean, some of the estimates, you know, for the for the next year, uh, we still don't have yet. We have to wait for those. So it's just a it's just a function of timing. Uh, but you know, all some of them are based upon allocation. So your population. Some of it is based upon um, how much. You know, fuel costs are uh, at any given you know, at any given time too. So those can fluctuate as well. Um, a portion of our gas tax uh, does go uh, to pay for salaries and benefits of some public works employees, our streets employees, uh, and for the work that they do to maintain that. But we do have pretty good flexibility with regards to capital projects. So you just awarded a little over a million dollars in street projects. Um, these are some of the projects that we did in this past year. Um, uh, some of them uh, are grant funded, but uh, obviously, the other ones, you know, a street street striping po project that we did last year, which was relatively large, I think it was about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That was completed using local transportation funds, and then those road projects there that you see at the bottom as well, uh, that were completed um, last summer mostly. Uh, so, just some highlights uh, for this fiscal year. You see there are some of the some of the projects that we've worked on over the last year. Um, Emergency operation plan updates. Uh, uh, Chief Perkins talked about the ISO improvement during the Measure E process. Uh, uh, facility investments to uh, HVAC uh, replacements, and then obviously the KPD uh, remodel, which is currently underway, and then um, the fiber project, which is one of the larger ones uh, that we've been working on. Uh, and then you know we've had a lot of success with our economic development programs. We plan to continue those going forward. Um, and so um, you know we've talked over the last few months about. A handful of these areas, but before I move on to 24, any questions about the current year? No? All right, there we go. Uh, so for the general fund, uh, we've talked about this a little bit, but uh, these are our major uh, revenue sources here. Uh, sales tax, uh, our TOT, our hotel bed tax, uh, building permit and licensing, our motor, motor vehicle license fees, our franchise fees, <coughs> and our property taxes. You can see this is the breakout here. Um, uh, last year was actually the first year uh, that I'm aware of where our sales tax actually outpaced our property tax collections, and so we are seeing that continued growth. And this this is not measure at all. This is just general fund here. So um, just diversification of uh, businesses in town, and um, you know, um, you know, thriving downtown, things like that have helped uh, contribute to that. So that's obviously a positive that we'd like to see continue. Um, and you can see that that you know takes up the largest portion of revenue that we have uh, in the general fund. Uh, here's our revenue trend uh, over the last five years. Um, 2022, uh, a little bit higher, uh, mostly because of uh, building. Uh, that was probably our busiest year of uh, new development, both uh, residential and uh, commercial. Uh, T-Mobile and their significant investment uh, occurred in that year as well. But we have seen uh, a steady increase uh, in just a general trend line of increasing revenue, uh, obviously uh, positive over the last five years. And then just a, a summary from the general fund of both uh, revenues uh, over expenditures. So uh, the revenues are on the left-hand side, uh, expenditures on the right. Uh, so moving into general fund expenditures, again, you can see here uh, sort of the breakout uh, council and admin. Uh, admin includes uh, basically uh, every administrative position that's in City Hall, as well as some portions of department heads as well, if they're not broken out by uh, individual department there. Uh, and so just uh, an overview of some of those individual uh, departments that are included in the general fund. Uh, obviously, uh, City Council, uh, which includes uh, this year, is proposed to include uh, funding for everyone to attend the League of Cal, uh, Cal Cities Conference, uh, and then our strategic plan update, which will be undertaking uh, in the early part of the next fiscal year. 
Uh, Non-departmental is where we have a lot of our uh, economic development incentives. You know, they fall under a department. But then again, I, I, I referenced that sun made payment uh, uh, a little while ago. And so again, um, a year nine of 10 for that. So that'll be coming off soon. Um, as far as uh, a, a, um, position counts, uh, there are no uh, added uh, positions uh, uh, in the coming year for uh, employees. So those all continue um, through, uh, through the general fund. And you can see there, again, uh, we continue the transfer out to both the pool and the senior center for community services and uh, our contract with uh, uh, the Fresno Madera Agency on Aging uh, uh, will resume on July 1. And I know uh, Adam and uh, Christina have been working to try and get that amount increased because uh, at one time they had several agencies and that um, the number of agencies has whittled. And so, but the amount that has come to us has not gone up. So we're trying to get that amount up since they have less agencies that they're partnering with. Uh, again, uh, police department uh, maintains the existing general fund positions, um, includes any uh, MOU uh, increases that uh, have been adopted as well. And then there are uh, some capital purchases um, that are planned for the coming year. Um, we do have some uh, planned uh, capital projects, uh, specifically HVAC uh, improvements. And then we have uh, our radio room, our control room, which is over at Coffee Pot uh, Park that needs to be updated and um, have some uh, weather control um, so that that's more reliable in the hotter months. Um, some of our HVAC units, especially at the police department, are uh, 20 and 21 years old. So they are uh, past their useful life. And so uh, we have some plans to <coughs> replace those as well. Uh, rec funds, again, uh, pool and senior center. Um, you can see here uh, a revenue sum. I mean, this, they're, they're pretty stagnant each year. I mean, they're pretty similar. I mean, we have similar revenues from year to year. We haven't uh, increased our, our rates. Our rates are, are, are pretty in line with uh, what surrounding communities are charging with regards to like entry to pool and things like that. And obviously we want it to be a place that a community that, um, you know, can utilize, especially if they don't have their own pool place to go in the warm months. Uh, and we do have uh, a plan for the shade replacement, which is on kind of the north end of the pool there. And that's, that's split with, uh, with the high school 50, uh, 50%. Uh, special revenue funds, again, uh, the, uh, uh, the transportation funds we'll start with. Um, similar, uh, we, do, we are expecting some uh, increases in revenue, which is a positive, gives us a little bit more uh, opportunity to do some more uh, some more projects you can see there the road projects that you just approved this evening will actually technically get done this summer but in the next fiscal year so that's why they're included up there um, and then uh, uh, the 18th avenue sidewalk project will hopefully be coming to fruition here very soon as well as the 12th avenue sidewalk project and we have included some higher amounts for sidewalk repairs because we have gotten some more requests for uh, to just you know whether they're trip hazards or broken piece you know broke, broken portions of concrete, so we've increased that as well so that um, we can address those. Uh, you, uh, council heard uh, an update uh, about Measure E two weeks ago, so this is uh, just a, a quick synopsis of that. Uh, again, uh, anticipating a little bit higher revenue collection uh, over the next year, which is provided by our third party uh, sales tax consultant. Um, the uh, Measure E Oversight Committee did affirm compliance uh, as required uh, under the uh, voter approved measure uh, during their May 15 meeting. Uh, it does uh, maintain uh, roughly 20% fund balance. And uh, you can see on the right hand just a few highlights and, and obviously they went through uh, more specifics on some of their capital outlay items and other projects planned um, for the coming year. Uh, from, a, from an enterprise fund standpoint, starting uh, um, start with the water department, uh, uh, there are uh, several project capital projects there is a contribution both for our uh, water purchase agreement as well as some capital projects related to the gsa so those are for recharge projects um, that are planned and approved through the gsa uh, board's budget uh, that is our our portion of that contribution uh, but we are also planning some water main replacements or installations to uh, help address some fire flow issues that were identified uh, in the water model that we had completed as part of this past year's budget um, so those are happening uh, as well as some other projects. We also are continuing funding for the uh, turf replacement program, which provides some grant funds for residents, but then also there are some areas of city uh, right of way that we plan to uh, convert as well. So we re reduce our reliance on um, water use for turf in those areas. Uh, the 
uh, solid waste one. I uh, just approved a, a fee increase uh, earlier this evening uh, as recommended by the consultant, 5.5%. Uh, uh, again, uh, this, uh, this fund is really a pass-through fund that, uh, hand, you know, that we collect the funds and send it to Mid-Valley Disposal. Same for our street sweeping services that uh, we provide. Uh, ambulance and fire, um, uh, similar uh, from years past. Uh, Chief and his group have been doing a really good job of trying to capture as much revenue from uh, those calls. Uh, it's, not, it's not really a revenue-making uh, source. It's not really the goal, but obviously the more that the ambulance is out and providing service to the community, the more the uh, revenue that we can um, uh, pull in to offset those costs. Uh, we do have, uh, we are participating again in the IGT program, which is basically uh, helps provide some of that delta uh, for Medi-Cal and Medicare runs that we only get a certain amount of money back and it helps provide sort of the, the funding uh, for the actual calls, or at least some of it. And then we are uh, continuing our bond payments on fire station number two. So uh, uh, maturity for that is uh, 2033. So uh, we still have a handful more years from that original bond uh, from when that uh, building was constructed. Uh, other funds that, uh, that we have, uh, important, but just a little bit uh, smaller. So de development impact fees. So these are fees that are only collected on eligible new, uh, new development. So um, certain projects uh, do not, are not eligible. So for example, the Stone Plaza project, while it's a new project, it was lost to fire. And we have uh, some uh, language in our municipal code that says if you lose over 50% of your building to fire, then you don't have to pay subsequent impact fees. You know, if you're doing a tenant improvement in a project, that doesn't collect impact fees. But every new home uh, pays a, a portion of impact fees to the individual funds, so parks, sewer, water, things like that. And, and new commercial development would, would do that too. So grocery outlet, you know, Dutch Brothers, those ones all paid their uh, impact fees when they were built. Now, there are a handful of uh, – there are – already approved uh, phases of single family development that are still uh, in process. So uh, Westar uh, phase three and, and phase four. Uh, Century uh, Communities is uh, nearing completion. They're working on their, their park as we speak. Uh, and then we do have an expenditure next year as the state is required uh, every eight years that your nexus study. So you have to do a study every year to show that what you're charging for impact fees is related to improvement projects that you have, right? So whether that's traffic or park projects. And so ours was last done in 2016. So uh, we are up for that. And that's a new, a new mandate that uh, came down uh, about a year ago. Uh, our finance authority serves as a, 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 a area for our debt obligations. Uh, and also for our special assessment district collections for some improvements for when uh, subdivisions were built, but most, most of those have matured now. So there were a few in the early 90s that are different from landscape and lighting districts, but they basically borrow to put in certain improvements, whether it be lighting or roads or things like that, and then they uh, assessed uh, the homeowners in that area for a short period of time until those were paid off. So some of those are mature and no longer being collected. Landscape and lighting is a little bit different. Those are the ones that are collected each year, similar to the CFD. Um, some of the older landscape and lighting districts don't have a CPI escalator, so they're still paying, you know, 60 or $70, the same as they were in the early 90s. So it's not nothing, but it hasn't quite kept up with uh, everything else. Um, and then we do have, we do show interagency funds. So every department basically pays their fair share to make sure that they're paying their, their uh, appropriate amount for workers' compensation liability, employee assistance programs, general liability, our vehicle insurance, all those sorts of things. And so uh, it helps to make sure that that's being equitably distributed across the funds. Uh, but one thing is that uh, the insurance market has increased rather significantly uh, uh, to the tune of about 24%, and that's $215,000 uh, for us this upcoming year. So uh, significant um, uh, increase. Um, we do participate in a local pool, so uh, we feel like uh, – we're as competitive as we can probably be in that area, but uh, some of it is, you know, based upon your mod factor or, you know, how that's spread across, um, you know, differing jurisdictions. But it is a, a significant um, change from last year. And I did want to call out uh, the actual community facilities districts because uh, this was approved in 2017 uh, for all new subdivisions and all actually all new developments, so any new annexation. So whether it's residential or commercial, um, they all pay into it. But... The vast majority of what we've had have been um, single-family residential. Um, and so, again, uh, these are similar to the landscape and lighting districts, but they are more expensive. They can pay for things like police and fire. They can cover road improvements, alley improvements. And so we had 
really this conversation, uh, you know, back then because not only were costs sort of outpacing what property taxes were, but there was a conversation at that time with the council about whether or not we want to continue to build subdivisions with alleys uh, and things like, and those other amenities, but because we don't, as you'll see in our older neighborhoods, we don't really have a mechanism for maintaining them or keeping them paved or updated. Um, and so all the new ones uh, uh, do have that. And so uh, as we've started to see these uh, be built and come online, you can see uh, we're starting to actually realize a little bit of revenue. Um, and so uh, we have we have two zones. Uh, basically all of Fresno County is, is zone one, uh, save the uh, 17 homes that are in the Summerlin subdivision. The Summerlin subdivision, uh, Fresno County homes mimic the Tulare County side um, because we're technically from a legal standpoint, Tulare County ha is the uh, taxing jurisdiction. They have they actually collect it from the Tulare County uh, lots that are in Summerlin and then remit that payment to us. And then we use that to maintain it. So we maintain the parks and we will be responsible for uh, you know, paving the roads and doing the alleys and all those things. And so um, you can see there, there are on the right-hand side, there are uh, two different uh, cost structures there. So zone ones uh, for the next year are uh, about $768 a home and zone two are $1,561 a home. Quick question on that. Sure. Mm -hmm. So Summerlin tracks um, zone two, that higher amount, that includes the Fresno County homes that are in Summerlin? It does. They're all charged that higher rate, the Tulare County rate? Yes. Why is that? Uh, for equity, because they're paying for the same, basically the same improvements. They have to pay, you know, pay the same amount for uh, road repair, alleys, uh, the same park improvements that all the other ones that, uh, in Tulare County have. So that was the discussion at the time as to how we handle um, you know, basically homeowners who might be living on opposite sides of the street in the same subdivision, but paying a different amount of money, so. And their cost, is it higher because they're in Tulare County or is it the upkeep of that area is more expensive? It's both, um, so it's because they're in Tulare County and we don't collect the full portion of the property taxes as well uh, on the Tulare County side, but also because of uh, the agreement that the council had with, uh, with to Larry County in terms of who would respond to those particular areas um, and who is ultimately responsible for all that upkeep as well. I'm in zone one and I'm just looking zone two double. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Signif and it's a significant yes. amount more. I was part of the people that made the decision yeah. <laughs> way back when and happened to be in the first mm -hmm. group, I think, that had to pay that. But just was wondering if it's a lot more expensive to them. It is, yeah. Um, and then these are just a handful of the capital improvement projects that we have. Uh, so obviously the, the fiber optic uh, is planning to wrap up here in the first part of the fiscal year. Uh, strategic plan I mentioned. Uh, we are in the middle of an organizational compensation study as well. Um, the phase one TOD project, which is the transient ori oriented development project is the one where uh, we're looking to add bike lanes on Draper Street as well as some other uh, improvements. That's, a, that's a, a grant project through the Fresno Council of Governments. Uh, and then obviously a handful of other projects there, including the, the dog park improvements. Uh, we're supposed to have a first rendering of that in the next week, yeah. in the next week. Uh, and so then that will go to the Community Services Commission. They'll be able to take a look at that and we'll continue on that process. Um, and then just a handful of other capital projects. Uh, we talked a little bit about this in a specific uh, um, presentation, but our CalPERS contributions there. So these are, you can kind of see from uh, just starting on the far left, uh, the amount that we had to pay in 1920 was uh, about 576. Um, we have made some additional discretionary payments, um, which has been basically done through any of the surplus that we have in the general fund uh, falls into some specific uh, accounts. And we use that to draw down uh, this liability so that it's not uh, weighing down our regular operations. Uh, and so uh, what would have been uh, our, our cost uh, last year in fiscal year 22-23 would have been about $715,000 because we made some of those ADPs and uh, saw some of that return on investment. It was, it was lower than that um, by about $80,000. And because of uh, the fund doing well two years ago, 
our actual payment there for the upcoming year uh, is going down a little bit uh, to about six hundred eight thousand dollars, which is good. Uh, I anticipate that uh, once we get the new uh, numbers from uh, the last year, which had a negative number, that that number is going to go the opposite direction, and we'll have a much more significant payment uh, due next year. And I, this is just kind of a um, synopsis of you know, what the council has done to help offset those, you know, set those fees each year. And again, it talks a little about using the surplus funding to go into to some uh, particular accounts. And we are using, we are uh, recommending to use some of the equipment reserve fund this year to pay for a police vehicle, for example. So we have used some of those funds um, as needed and as approved by council. And then finally, uh, you uh, will consider a, a financial policy. Uh, as part of the budget adoption uh, includes uh, generally accepted accounting principles and, and best practices from the Government Finance Officers Association. Uh, there is one change uh, that went through the um, Finance Committee this year, and that is a change to our credit card policy. So using the CalCard, which is a uh, sort of a uniform uh, local government uh, uh, credit card, and then uh, just updating some of those policies with regards to how it's used and who is able to uh, get a card uh, in the organization. So uh, just a, uh, a quick summary, um, the figures are, are mostly final. I'd call them about 95% at this point. Uh, however, if there is additional council or public input over the next couple of weeks, certainly those could be incorporated uh, or considered during the public hearing uh, set for June 21st. Um, uh, we are, in, uh, this budget that's proposed is structurally balanced, so, um, and we remain uh, in a good fiscal position because of uh, you know, proper planning and, uh, Prudence by the city count by the city council um, maintains the city staffing levels as mentioned, uh, and includes our economic development incentive programs, which uh, have been successful uh, in lots of different areas, and which we've expanded to from some of them from just the downtown to uh, the rest of the community, and then just continuing to make sure that we're taking care of what's already here and, uh, by investing in our infrastructure and quality of life improvements uh, at our parks and other places as well. So that concludes my report. Certainly happy to answer any questions on my presentation or if there are particular questions about the uh, the line items in your uh, in your packet this evening. Thank you. Uh, first, we'll go to public comment if there is any. Seeing none, council? Council discussion questions? Wow. Good presentation there. Not a single, not a single question so far. We do have a couple of weeks if we have any questions, concerns, or anything before we bring it back. Yeah, so please look at the spreadsheets, public look at the spreadsheets, and uh, if there are particular questions um, that Alma and myself know, if there are individual projects you have questions about, we want included or not included, um, certainly we can um, talk about that and then have that discussion in two weeks as well during the public hearing. Okay. The only comment I really had was uh, our sales tax outproducing our property tax. That's, that's a big deal. I think that's a lot of... I think that's a lot of good work, chamber, staff, and really just we had a plan and we've stuck to it and it's working out. And I know that that seems simple, but in city government with the changeover of electeds, changeover to staff and stuff, just everybody holding true to it I think is, is working out. I do. Yeah, especially since at the height of Kmart, it was about $110,000 that was coming from Kmart alone. That whittled down to about 60000 before they closed. But So even covering that gap has been... Has been good. Yeah. So, well done to staff and everyone that was involved in that. Appreciate it. Thank you. So that's informational only. We have no action needed for that. We'll move on to item seven: city council reports and staff communication. We'll start with the community services commission. Oh, that's Vince. Uh, Vince is also out on an excused absence for this meeting, so we don't have a report. Uh, Public Safety Committee, do we have a second on that, or did they have a meeting? Do we know? Okay. Uh, Chamber of Commerce? The meeting is next week, but we got a great update already. Economic Development? Uh, we Nothing to report. Finance Committee, we met on the 22nd, I believe it was. And we went through some solid waste uh, rate discussions and street sweeping. And I believe that's when we also started the um, well, it's community facilities district annual levy discussion that will be coming back to council, I believe, at a future date. Okay. And that's going to be 
kind of one of the things that uh, you had asked about with city manager. Uh, and then we went through our first quarter returns. So that is it from Finance uh, Planning Commission. Planning Commission hasn't met since the last meeting, and there is no meeting tomorrow night. Uh, South Kings GSA? We have not met. Downtown bid? Uh, the meeting was yesterday. Um, Reggie already kind of gave an overview of the June 2nd event. That was a, a big part of the discussion. Um, they said at any given time, um, and I don't know if you had a chance to come out here, there were at least 75 or more line dancers um, during the event last Friday. Um, the other thing was they are um, talking about how they can support the chamber for ribbon cuttings for businesses that are within the bid district. So they had a lot of great ideas um, in talking about that. And they'll be working with the chamber on not to take over anything, but just how they can come alongside the chamber and support that and support the businesses within the district. And that's it. That's great. Uh, for Council of Governments, we did meet. Um, it was a light agenda, and we collectively participated in a public ser public service announcement for water safety with the rivers being closed. Um, and that's all to report from COG. Uh, council member reports. I have one thing. Um, just to follow up on one of our previous item agendas from a meeting, I think it was our last meeting or the one before, um, Kingsburg Elementary had applied for a grant, the district, for a community service grant for $7.8 million, and it's partnering with, um, there were community things written into it with the schools, and our SRO position that we accrued for the Kingsburg Elementary was contingent on that grant, and they were awarded it. So I just wanted to share that news with you. That's good news for our community. We'll also bring in counselors at every school to work in the community at KCAP liaisons for um, the city for the school so lots of great things with that so I'm excited that we're going to have our own SRO. Did, so the elementary school approved also I know the high school had approved it prior to our last I haven't seen it on the board minutes yet. Okay. Uh, it's set for uh, yeah. Monday. Member Silva? <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a list a mile long, so I'll try to summarize everybody. But um, great job on the kebab twist ribbon cutting by Chamber. It was really a nice event, and I strongly recommend the chicken kebabs. They're amazing. Um, the Kingsburg Truck Center had their uh, electric fleet event, and several of us attended that. Um, and that was a very nice event. Uh, they have a lot of um, good, new, innovative um, vehicles that are coming out that are going to be, I think, um, you know, very useful tools for not only businesses but municipalities in the future. So that's something to keep an eye on. Several of us attended the um, service day at the Senior Center, which was a really, really great event. Um, I think we served, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam's not here, but I think it was over 70. 80 over 80 over 80 um, seniors they had a great time I mean just really a good event um, I also personally um, went to the fruit trail opening ceremony that was at Sunmade um, there was a numer numerous vendor participants it was um, it was pretty well attended and um, it was a nice event it was um, it was uh, out in the courtyard and um, there was several other um, Buddy Mendez was there, several other government um, officials were there as well. Um, and then obviously the Swedish Festival, uh, we all participated in that. That was a great event. Uh, Chamber, thank you for doing that. And then just a few other things. Um, the Tri-County Healthcare District met and they reviewed the grant application. So the city had three grant applications, which two of the grant applications were awarded straight away. Um, Chief Perkins, excellent job on the presentation and Chief Dadian um, to you as well on the safety equipment. Um, the one that was pending was the public works and the 
for the um, foam and that one they needed more clarification on and I think that that's pending um, so I'm not quite sure where they're at on the final decision um, but I thought two out of three straight away was pretty good and hopefully we'll get three out of three so um, other than that um, the baseball team went to state and unfortunately they fell short in extra innings but it was great that they won Valley and got to state and uh, was well attended over 500 people I think wow. between Scott Hodges the AD and I I was like how many people are it was like over 500 and it was um, it was a tough loss but um, it was uh, it was a great season for those gentlemen and, and, and all of the school and so it was really good to see and so that's all I have this was probably more than that's great a lot. <laughs> so. uh, city manager's report uh, a few quick ones um, I know there are some questions we've gotten some questions about uh, the the debt deal that was reached at the federal level um, about uh, unspent COVID uh, funds and so that doesn't affect any of the ARPA dollars uh, that the cities have received. There are some federal agencies that they had unobligated funds that those are, are coming back. But just to be clear, uh, ARPA dollars are not included in that. Um, uh, our fiber project, just an update on that. So phase two has been continuing uh, pretty well. That we uh, finally got uh, the Caltrans permit for phase two. So uh, they are going to be continuing. They are going to be actually doing night work. Uh, which is required by Caltrans uh, because they have to do some lane closures and because of um, the traffic volumes on that street. Um, that's going to start on Sunday evening, uh, this Sunday evening, and go for about a week. And so that'll be from uh, 18th to Madsen. Um, we are phase three have received all of our permits except for our uh, Caltrans permit. So uh, we just need. Uh, couple more of those and then uh, we'll be good on uh, all of our permits uh, and then uh, some internal uh, good news uh, our accountant uh, Monique Lozano had her uh, baby girl uh, this past weekend so uh, uh, it's Camila Tony and she was eight pounds three ounces so that's Camila? Great. That's Camila. 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 so that's all I have that's great Okay, future agenda items we have none listed. At this point, we're going to adjourn out of regular calendar. We're going to go into closed session for a conference with legal counsel with anticipated litigation. Thank you.